I'll just describe what I'm seeing first. Let me get the tools out of the way. I've noticed in videos of claim that there are three speakers or multiple speakers in here. There are not. There's one. One driver, one active driver, and then two passive radiators. There's one on this side and one on this side. And they, what's neat is that one's on the bottom and one's on the top. When this drives one way, it pushes this out and pushes this out, but they're both pushing in opposite directions, which minimizes vibration. So some speakers that I've seen, they'll have two passive radiators on the same side. These are often cheaper speakers, and it, it results in increased vibration, even the speaker moving around sometimes. Or if it's just one passive radiator, again, it can also result in the speaker kind of vibrating and moving around. So it's nice that there's actually two equally sized passive radiators right here is what I was looking for. It is pretty clearly an 18650 cell. It's got a bunch of silicon that's holding it in place that was up against this ridge here. So the battery is actually right here. You could poke pretty far in here and not touch anything with the battery or any electronics, except for right at the top here, which it looks like we're the pretty thick board. I'm wondering if this is the antenna and the Bluetooth module on the very top. It looks like the battery's in a carrier. So let's see if we can get that released. I like these speakers a lot. I think I've said that before in, a, in another video. What bugged me is that they're three years old. The battery life is good still, but I was like, can I get a replacement battery for this? And Bose doesn't sell replacement batteries. So these two screws here on the very top seem to pertain to the battery because it looks like it's got a plastic frame. Very hard to see what's anywhere inside here because it is covered in a lot of silicone adhesive. I would recommend, strongly recommend using ceramic or some kind of non-metallic needle nose pliers to get screws out of here when you're working with a battery that has still got a charge on it. But get these three screws out. I think these are pertaining to the battery. Yep. Is there another screw that I'm not seeing? Oh, there is. There's a fourth screw in the right corner here. Get that screw out. And I think we'll be able to get the battery out. I, I think it's soldered to the main PCB. We can at least get it out of the way and see what we're working with. It's got its own little, it's a three wire, four wire connection. Some nice foam in here to minimize vibration. Yep, there's foam all the way down, foam over here for this PCB. It's a nicely laid out PCB. Looks like they use hot glue. I'm not super keen on hot glue, but maybe they're using low temperature melt hot glue. And so, you know, these components that are rated 105 C can handle it for a very short duration, just like it's just like soldering. We've got some components, very, very small stuff down here. I want to be careful with this flex cable, which seems to go to, oh, no. Okay, so this board here is for the micro USB, and then there's the two buttons that power it on and do Bluetooth things. That's a nice, thick PCB. I think it's probably being used for support as well as be screwed into the plastic. It's a very well done circuit board. It uses for Bluetooth and probably all of its control. I think it's Cypress Technologies. And then there's a Texas Instruments something. I think the Texas Instruments part actually is the class D amplifier. A, I think there's a boost converter going on here somewhere because we've got a big inductor and a big capacitor. So it's taking that 3.7 volts and increasing it to whatever it needs for the amplifier. Yeah, so I'll walk around the board and I'll just say what I think's going on and then I'll correct myself if I'm totally way off. So it looks like on the right hand side here we might have the battery control stuff, but the, the battery it looks like it might have its own stuff going on here. We'll come back to that in a second. So this is our main brain. It looks like it's Bluetooth because it goes off. You have your Bluetooth chip antenna, but also it looks like they may have done a little bit of another antenna here that's actual, I don't know. I see a chip. It looks like a chip antenna, but it's kind of small for a chip antenna. Unless that's a match, an inductor or some kind of matching impedance or something like that. But I feel like it goes down beneath the board and then comes on the other side of this 
And then on this side, they put their Bose silkscreen. But this is the main Bluetooth module, plus it probably has like an 8-bit microcontroller to handle all the command and control things on the Bluetooth speaker. To the right of it, I'm pretty sure this is a TPA313602. This is the amplifier. And it might do things like I squared, it might be I squared S between these two, and it handles volume control, like it does all the volume control and everything else for the actual speaker, and might handle some of the clever pairing. No, well, maybe not. Maybe this handles the clever like party mode, stereo mode, where the one of the speakers acts as a host for the other speaker and then passes either the opposite channel information or the duplicate channel information across to that other speaker using its Bluetooth antenna to transmit to that other speaker, which is kind of neat. There's not a lot of other stuff in here. There's a lot of power supply stipulated stuff. There's a few there's buttons on the other side of this board. I don't want to take everything out. Eh, you know what? Screw it. I'm already in here. So we come down to the speaker. Two screws hold the speaker in. And then it's probably got a little bit of a seal on it. Oh, it's just got a gasket. It's just got a little gasket. And it's got a bunch of, ele oh my goodness. There's so much silicon holding this together, which is nice because I didn't damage this lip very badly. So this will form a nice seal to put this whole thing back together again. I might do it with just the silicone I have now because I damaged all the clips that were holding this together. I don't know if any of them are actually even remotely no, there's not really anything left. So it's not, so it's gonna be held together basically by the silicon adhesive. So when I do replace the battery, which is not yet, I'm not gonna replace it just yet because I don't need to, but I wanted to see how it would be done. It's nice to know that I can just pop this open. The speaker comes off nicely and has a little gasket on it. So you don't have to worry about actually resealing the speaker, which is makes sense, I guess, in assembly because if you had to put a sealant down there, then you might, get it on the speaker and that could affect performance and stuff like that. I'm only gonna take off one of these passive radiators just to show you the other side of it because there's not much to show. It just looks the same on the other side, but it's got a nice metal frame on it to keep it from flexing because that would increase distortion on this radiator. If It acts sort of like a second speaker, but it's obviously completely passive. There's no magnets in here or anything like that like some might have suggested. It's just acting in a sealed enclosure when this speaker, speaker moves in, this moves out, whoops, not that far. And then when this moves out, speaker moves out, this draws this in because this is a sealed enclosure. So it creates a vacuum and pushes this in. So it just acts as a, that, that really is, it really is designed to just kind of sit like that. And then this bracket holds it all in place. So the nice thing is that once I reseal this and do the whole reassembly and I'll test it with uh, adhesive and then we'll listen to one speaker and the other speaker and see if even if you know you mangle it up as badly as I did, is it still repairable? And, and important to note that I'm not talking about this outer, oops, this outer piece. I'm talking about this inner, inner seal. That's the main seal. But this is a Bose driver. It's not a metal spider. I mean, it's a small little speaker. So the spider is actually made of plastic. This is probably to save weight and cost and a variety of things and still sounds good. And it's a small enough speaker where you're not gonna be fussing about what's the total harmonic distortion of this driver and how good does it sound over whatever frequency range. It sounds really good. I mean, the speaker sounds great for its size. Hey, you can see that there's quite a bit of an excursion on that little driver. It really does move, but it needs the passive radiators to really bring the bass out. This is an open air right now and a small driver just doesn't, you can sort of hear it, but yeah, it needs the it needs the passive radiators. What's left is just this battery, which has like this paper over it. It's covering the positive side of the cell. The headline is that it is an 18650 cell. So it is very much replaceable. Yeah, what's behind this wax paper? It, it The battery seems very much isolated. Like it's on its own little frame and it's got a rubber bumper on it that is pressing up against, I think, the top side. Oh, no, it's the bottom side, I think. This goes this way. I remove this flex cape gently. There we go. And I can think I just pull this off. Yes? I don't think it's being held in by anything else. Oh, there's a peg. Let's just lift up against that peg. Just being careful with this little peg thing to hold the 
board in place. There we go. So we've got the whole thing apart. Here's the basically the whole assembly, the board, battery, and speaker. And the rest is all kind of passive stuff. Little silicone dimples here to provide the actuation force for the buttons on the opposite side. And let's take a look at the opposite side of this. These are nice buttons. These are nice momentary actuation micro switches, but there is an antenna, it looks like. So it looks like they did a chip antenna, but maybe Bose did both. And then also have this little um, PCB antenna on one side of the board. It just kind of juts out on the one side and the other side they get the opportunity to put their Bose logo in the silk screen. It's like a fiduciary point there, perhaps. The speaker has three wires going to it. And I think I know why. Bose has this clever thing where they're able to determine when the speaker is distorting. And I think that's what they're doing here. There's the negative and positive that go right into the spider. And then there's this green one, which is right here. I think it has something to do with the speaker cone bottoms out. You obviously will get distortion. There's over excursion in the going outward, obviously, when it returns, that, that sine wave is gonna push it in the back of the assembly. So I think this lead is for detection. It's like a feedback. It could also be just on the winding. There could be a feedback winding. It's like a feedback winding on a transformer where it can just detect what signal's going out and then what does the waveform look like on that feedback winding. And if it's not sinusoidal or it's a very got weird stuff going on with it, then it knows that there's something going on with the speaker being overdriven. It adapts the EQ to the speaker actively, which is pretty awesome. So that way you, you minimize distortion with a speaker that's not particularly a super expensive speaker. All right, I got distracted by that and I want to go back to this battery for a moment. There's a printed circuit board around it and I'm hoping I can get this label back over it. This is just like wax paper coated tape. They really do a good job of trying to hide everything. <laughs> so you can't, I mean, they are trying to protect the thing. So I'm gonna rip, I'm just gonna rip this. There is a tab. Wow, what do they got here? It looks like, it looks like a electronic fuse. I don't know what that is. That is a weird, so the tab is, uh, it's tack welded. Okay, so the cell's tack welded. So someone makes this assembly, it looks like for Bose, or Bose makes the assembly. That's a little weird. Actually, you can get cells with tabs on them, and then you could just bend it and, and form it and solder this thing back together. The negative side is it also, I bet it's on both sides that they do this, which is very strange. It's spot welded on both sides. Okay. So that's what this board is, but I'll have to put down on the bottom what that little part is. I think it's battery protection. It's not a typical battery protection. I think there's also a thermistor that's embedded. I think that's what's being reported. I see TH at the top on the silk screen. I don't know if you can see it there, but it says TH and there's two little pins there. And then there's a flexible and it's, it's embedded in this. I don't know if I can peel up this polyethylene film tape. It's just over the battery. And it looks like, yeah, the polyethylene film tape but it's covering up all the battery regulatory stuff. It looks like this battery might be used in a variety of different things. It's a battery made by Panasonic, Energy Mexico. It is a rechargeable lithium ion battery pack. Nominal voltage 3.6, that's nice. So the battery, it's a 2950 milliamp hour, 11 watt hours. It does charge to 4.2 volts though. So, but the nominal voltage is slightly lower. I think that helps with a little bit more longevity in the cell. Anything else of interest on this? It is a UL recognized component. So this whole assembly is, looks like they could just take this battery and then just put it into different models of things that would require like an 11 watt hour cell. The cell is made in Japan. It says right here, cells made in Japan, further processed in Mexico, which means that the assembly is made in Mexico. Very interesting. And then underneath this label would be the thermistor. I'm stunned that this has got a thermistor I think it's right underneath this label here. I'm not gonna pull that off. You would need to pull this off and put that on the new cell when you replaced it. The whole thing is designed really to be pretty rugged. And that to me is impressive. Yeah, the only bummer about this whole thing is that 
in so doing and making the whole thing rugged, how to make this thing come together. You can see why they use these little teeth so it really grabs and holds the thing together. I'm just gonna test it now, but I don't think this is gonna even snap back together even closely. It snaps a little bit. It's gonna need cleaning and then some adhesive to hold this thing all back together. And that's fine, I'm fine with that. I'm curious how close we can get the sound quality to how it was originally. That'll be in a separate video. But it can come apart with patience, taking your time with a pry tool that is not the pry tool that I was using, but something that's probably a longer blade and not as sharp, that you can get around and loosen all that adhesive and then perhaps press in. It's gonna be tough. It's still gonna be tough because these are really, really stiff walls. And if you're pressing in on this, it may not be enough to get around that to pop those clips out to open this thing up, but it is possible to replace the battery and put it back together. I'm pretty confident with being able to put it back together and then sealing this on this inside rail, and then that will hold the whole thing together. But I would buy a battery with tabs on it, and then you can go ahead and take those tabs and cut the tab off here carefully and then you could solder directly to the cell itself. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've had this for three and a half years. The battery probably has another year or two on it before it really probably starts to degrade. If I can replace it and get another five years out of it, that'd be awesome. Anyways, I'm not worried about replacing the, the cell. To me, that's just, a, that's an easy thing to do. My concern is how does it sound after taking it apart like this, being a bit rough with the clips and losing that mechanical securement and can adhesive alone provide enough securement to hold the thing together and still provide pretty good sound. So we'll find out. So that'll be in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, let me know. Thanks for watching and take care.